Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing the Doppler effect, which is the effect that you hear whenever you hear something heading towards you or going away from you. The classic example is an ambulance or a fast car. As it's heading towards you, it sounds like and then when it passes you, it sounds like and the reason for this sound difference is because of the Doppler effect which also can explain other things, such as Doppler radar, also redshift between planets. But we're not gonna talk about those things today. We're just gonna focus on the equation and how it's used. So first, let's talk about the equation. And there's a lot of variables here. So first, let me write the equation, and then I'll explain what all these variables mean. Okay, so here's the equation. So wherever you see an O in this equation, that stands for observer, such as you listening to the siren blare. S stands for source, so in this case the car. Both of these Fs right here and here, these are both the frequency. So the left one is the frequency of the observer, and so the right one is the frequency of the source. And so then that leaves two variables. VO is velocity of the observer, and then VS is velocity of the source. Again, the car. Oh, and I forgot one. This V right here is the speed of usually sound, sometimes it's light, but it's the speed of your medium. So for instance, the most common number we're gonna use for V is 343 meters per second. That is the speed of sound in air. So for instance, a siren blaring its horns and you hear it, that would be an example where you use 343 because it's the speed of sound in air. In other examples, you might use V equals three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, which is the speed of light, but you would only be using this if we were talking about Doppler effect for an electromagnetic wave, which is how Doppler radar works. But if you don't understand that, I'm probably gonna cover it in another video, so let's just focus on speed of sound in air for today, which is the 343 meters per second. And the last thing to explain is the minus plus and the plus minus. Very strange. It's probably the only equation that I know of that has a minus plus in it. Here's what I would say for the pluses and the minuses. We're going to use the top whenever the object is heading toward you. And you're going to use the bottom sign, whether it's plus or minus, if the object is heading away from you. Now, by the way, it is possible for both to be toward, both to be away. You can have one of each, one toward, one away. You can also have one is toward and the other is zero. And it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus because plus or minus zero is the same thing. And if you don't understand how that's possible, don't worry, we have a couple examples today that will make sense of it. So now let's look at a couple examples. Number one, let's say a car is heading towards you with a velocity of 20 meters per second. You are standing here, you're not moving. And you are at rest here, your velocity is zero. And let's say the car's horn has a frequency of 1000 hertz. That's the actual frequency of the car. But the question I'm gonna ask is, what frequency do you hear? That's my question. So to do that, you're the observer, and so we're just gonna plug into the Doppler effect equation with the numbers we have. Frequency of the observer equals the velocity is 343. And then I have to think, is it plus or minus? And that is a trick question. The reason why is because even though the car is heading towards you and it should be the top, the problem is in the numerator is the observer and you, the observer, are not moving. So it's plus or minus zero, which again, it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus zero, it's still just zero. What matters for the top and the bottom is the denominator because that has the source. The source is moving towards you, I use the top, which is minus for the denominator. If you don't believe me, check the equation. And that speed of the car is 20, which goes right there. And then finally times the frequency of the source, which is 1000. And you can just plug this in a calculator and we'll get our final answer. It looks like we're gonna get a frequency of about 1062 Hertz, which makes perfect sense because in general, whenever the object is heading towards you, it means that the frequency is going to be a little bit louder than normal, and whenever it's heading away from you, it should be getting quieter overall. Now, here is the next problem. This one's gonna be a challenging one. Let's say you're running away 
from a bear. And you know, bears are scary because they're pretty deadly. So let's make this bear as angry as possible. Yep, no, that's an angry bear if I've ever seen one. Do bears have tails? Okay, this one will. And you are running away for your life away from this bear. And you know how fast you can run. We know that we can run at about, let's say, 8 meters per second, which would be like 16 miles per hour. So you're like sprinting it as fast as you can. And let's say you, the observer, are hearing a frequency of 855 hertz from the bear. Like it's growling, you hear 855 hertz because you are really amazing at distinguishing sounds down to the frequency. But you think, huh, that's strange because as we all know, the frequency of a bear is actually 850 hertz. In other words, the frequency you hear is different than the frequency of the bear. And we all know the reason for that. It's because the bear is chasing you with some velocity. So the question is, in order for this scenario to happen, what is the velocity of the bear? So to answer this question again, we just need to plug in variables into the formula. Frequency of the observer equals V plus or minus VO over V minus plus VS times FS. Looks like the observer U is 855, so I'll plug that in right there. Then the velocity speed of sound that the air is traveling in is 343. So you, the observer, are you heading towards or away from the bear? Obviously you're running away from the bear. So we should use minus the bottom for the observer. Minus your speed, which we know is eight. And then in the denominator, again, V is 343, because it's the speed of sound in air. And then I have to think about minus or plus, and that, remember, is for the bear. Now the bear is heading towards us, we should use the top. That one's gonna end up being minus as well. We do not know the speed of the bear, so that's what we're solving for. And finally, the frequency of the source is 850. That is the frequency of the bear itself. And now we just have to solve for Vs. There's a couple ways you can do this. My recommendation would be, very first thing is divide both sides by 850. And so now you have on the left, 855 over 850. On the right, numerator is 343 minus eight is 335. And then in the denominator, you have 343 minus VS. Again, there's a couple things you can do here. What I would do is I would cross multiply. So on the left, 855 times the quantity, 343 minus V of the bear is equal to 850 times 335, which I can plug in my calculator. So first I'll distribute the 855 to both sides here. Let's see, what's 855 times 343? Looks like it's a ridiculously big number, 293,265. And then minus 855 VS. Hopefully this is making sense, this is like algebra, so if you don't know it, then that's a problem. And then the right side, 850 times 335, that's gonna be 284,750. And finally, if you wanna solve for VS, we can subtract this number from both sides. So then we'll get on the left, negative 855 VS equals negative 8,515. And then we just divide both sides by negative 855. And we'll get a final answer of about 10 meters per second. Not exactly, but it rounds up. And so that's the speed of the bear. Remember, our speed is eight meters per second. So basically, we're in trouble. And uh, the answer is 10 for this problem. That's the speed of the bear. So once again, you'll notice that if I go back to the beginning, the frequency that we hear is gonna be slightly higher than the frequency of the actual bear. The reason for that is because the bear is heading towards us. Even though we're running away from it, the bear is still out chasing us. And now we have one more example to do today. This is going to be the echo example. Echo examples are always the trickiest, but the good news is once you know the secret, they're pretty easy. So let's say we have a train that's heading into a tunnel. And we're gonna be standing on top of the train because we have no fear of danger, right? And so we're approaching this tunnel right here, very dark, very scary. And the tunnel has like a total distance of, we'll say, one kilometer. At the end of the one kilometer, let's say there's 
you know, some sort of wall here that sound can reflect off of. And what you're going to do is you're going to say echo right here. And then your sound is going to reach the edge of the cave, bounce off of it, and then get reflected back like this. And then you are going to hear the echo. My question is, let's say your frequency is 3000 hertz. What frequency do you hear back from the echo? And let's say the speed of the train is moving. Let's say speed of train is 50 meters per second. So the thing about this problem is that it's two parts. The reason why is because you are the source and the observer is also you. But you can't think of it like that. And the reason why is because something weird happens after it bounces off the wall and gets reflected back. So what I recommend doing is split this up into two parts. The first source is you. The first observer is the wall. And then in the second part of the problem, we're going to make the source the wall and we're going to make you the observer. That's basically how you have to solve this problem. So for the first time we use the equation FO equals V plus or minus VO over V minus plus VS times FS. Again, this is for the first part where the observer is what we're solving for. Both of these V's are 343 because we are sound in air. The only time you would not use 343 is, for instance, if you're talking about light or if you're talking about sound moving through water, then it would be different there too. Then the velocity of the observer, remember, that's the back of the cave wall. Is the back of the cave wall moving? No, that's zero. Doesn't matter if it's plus or minus. And then for Vs, that's the velocity of us, the source, which we're on the train. And the train's moving with a velocity of 50. And since the train's moving towards the back of the, of the cave, then we're going to use the top because it's heading towards, and the top is minus. And then times Fs, which our source was 3000 hertz. And so now I can just plug this all in a calculator and see what the observed frequency is. It looks like I get an observed frequency of 3512 hertz. Again, this is not the final answer. This is just at the cave wall. We still need to do this equation a second time to see what the actual observed frequency is back on the train. However, before I do that, I just want to make a little prediction. My prediction, and just so you know, I did not do this problem ahead of time, but my prediction is that the answer is going to be 4,024 hertz, about. That's my prediction. Let's see if I'm right. So what I'm going to do is I basically do the same equation, frequency of the observer equals V, which is 343, plus or minus. The cave wall is now the source, so we, the people on the train, are the observer. What I'm saying is that since we're the observer now, that's 50. And since we're heading towards the wall, we need to use the top because we're heading towards, so plus. And then the denominator is 343 minus plus the source, which is the wall. Again, the wall is not moving, so zero. And then finally times the frequency of the source. Again, for the second half of the problem, the source is the wall, which is the answer we just got a second ago. It was the 3,512 number from the first equation. So times 3,512. Again, I plug this in a calculator, and it looks like I get a final answer of 4,024 hertz, which is funny, right? Because that was my prediction before I even did the equation. Now, of course, the question is, how on earth did I know that? So basically, I look at the answer I got for the first part, which was 3,512, and let's subtract that from the original frequency to find the difference. In other words, the difference for the first half was an increase of 512 hertz from the first half. Since this is symmetrical, I just knew that the second half was going to be another increase in 512, and 3,512 plus 512, that got me this. And I did that in my head because it wasn't that hard to do. So in other words, we just discovered a second way to do the cave example. First, find the observed frequency at the wall. Find the difference or the increase. In this case, it was an increase of 512. And then just double the increase. So like 512 times 2 is 1024. So take your original and add 1024. That's another way you can do the echo example. And then the last, the third method, which is probably the easiest, and I would have started with this, 
method, but I literally only thought of it, like literally right now as I was making this video and this works. You can say you are the source and you can say you are the observer. In other words, you are moving 50 meters per second and then the observer is also moving 50 meters per second. But you gotta be careful with the variables. What I mean by that is frequency of the observer, you on the train, equals 343 plus or minus 50. And since the numerator is the observer and you are heading towards the back of the cave wall, you would use the top, so plus 50. And then in the denominator, 343 minus plus the source, which is still you on the train. And that's gonna be 50. And again, us, the source is heading towards the back of the cave wall. So that would be the top as well, minus. Multiply that by the original frequency, 3000. You plug this in your calculator, guess what? Same answer we've been getting all day, 4024. So there, there's a third method to get that frequency. And by the way, the reason why I gave you the distance of the cave is to try and trick you. The one kilometer did not get used in this problem at all. That's because it doesn't matter. All that matters is the frequency and your speed. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.